Hey everybody, it's Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And this is a video that I've been debating on making for a very, very long time. And I don't know, it's just, it's a uncomfortable subject for me. I'm still dealing with stuff, but yeah, August 23rd, so just a few days ago as of recording this video, um, was the nine year anniversary of one of my best friends slash ex-girlfriend, Courtney, and her passing away. And I debate on making this video for a lot of different reasons, um, but you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons I debate on making it, because I, I never want to exploit or feel like I'm exploiting her passing away, but, it's also one of my motivations for even having this channel is to help other people who are dealing with struggling or they're suffering or depression or addiction or anything like that. And that's what helps me make these videos no matter what my brain tells me because I ask myself on a regular basis, you know, what are my motives? And my motives today are to help any of you who have dealt with grief and loss or inevitably in the future when you're going to deal with grief and loss. So yeah, I'm gonna share about my best friend Courtney and tell you about what our relationship was like, what happened, how I've healed from it since then, because I'm a million times better than obviously I was when it first happened. And hopefully that you can learn from this and maybe it can help some people out there. So Courtney and my relationship, it happened, uh, we met when I was about 19, 20 years old. It was when my drinking was starting to get really heavy. Um, those of you who don't know me, I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic. And Courtney and I, we, we clicked because we drank the same. You know, I, I think I remember one of the first parties that we were at together, everybody was done for the night and going to sleep or going home and we're like, what, there's still a bunch of alcohol left. And you know, we drank the night away. and. You know, we, we hung out with each other and this eventually turned into dating because we drank the same. And most of our relationship was anytime we were together, we drank, we got really drunk. And you know, back then I had a lot of emotional issues as did she, and this was a, it was a toxic relationship. It was one of those relationships where we were on again, off again, on again, off again, but one thing was whenever we weren't dating, she was still one of my best friends in the world. One of the, one of the reasons I loved Courtney so much was no matter what was going on with me, she had no problem telling me the truth, telling me when I was acting like an idiot or a jerk or whatever. And you know, we, we knew our drinking was a problem. We both knew our drinking was a problem and there were so many times when we had just conversations, just like, we need to stop this, we need to quit doing what we're doing, we need to get better, and we would say like, should we go to rehab, should we go to AA meetings, we didn't even know what any of this stuff was, and we would like talk about it, but we never did anything about it, and and it was, it was messed up, and like, you know, a lot of my hurt, a lot of my pain came from the fact that, you know, anytime that we were together, it was because we were drinking. And I'm like, does she like me for me? Or does she only like drunk Chris? Or like, what is that? And then I had to ask myself, do I like her for her? Or do I only like, you know, her when she's drunk? You know, like it, there, there was so much confusion going on. And I'm very fortunate. I, I live in Las Vegas and I've driven drunk all over the city of Las Vegas in blackouts. And thank God, I didn't kill myself, thank God I didn't kill anybody else. And I remember one time, Courtney got into a really bad car accident because of her drinking, like, she came this close to death. It it messed her up, she was bumped and bruised and cut open and everything, and I think we weren't dating at the time. And I remember going over to her house to just check in on her, see how she was doing, hang out with her, and like, I broke down in tears because like, I had almost lost her and, and she was just like, that wreck messed her up. And I remember us talking and I was getting upset. She was showing me some of the cards from her other friends and her other friends, like they were sending her like cards and saying like, you know, get well soon so we can go out drinking again. And I'll get so mad at them. Like this almost killed her and you're talking about when you can go drink again. But like I had to look at it too because when she did heal up and stuff, that's what me and her did again, you know? and. 
it was difficult because any, you know, any time that we weren't talking, I knew her friends were taking her out, and I knew there was a problem, and I knew I had a problem too. But what eventually happened was I ended up meeting my son's mother when Courtney and I weren't dating. And, you know, my son's mother, she obviously got pregnant and things like that, and Courtney still was one of my best friends in the world. And it, when my son was born, I think he was maybe four or five months pregnant. Uh, no, wait, my son wasn't pregnant. <laughs> he was four or five months old. And at this time, you know, my drinking was really bad and I knew I had to get better because I had a son. And that's when I got introduced to pain medications, okay? That's when my drug addiction started. And, you know, I thought I was better, you know? I'm not drinking anymore, you know? Uh, Courtney was off, she was still drinking and going to bars and partying and things like that. But I thought I was better because I was taking pills instead, which isn't better. My life was still a hot mess. and. When my son was four or five months old or six months, uh, Courtney, still being one of my best friends, she wanted to come over and meet my son. And I remember, yeah, it was it was July. It was July. She came over and she got to meet my son and she hang out with my she hung out with myself, my son's mom, and one of my best friends. We were, you know, hanging out, we were playing board games. And I remember her and I went outside to go smoke. And something that meant a lot to me at the time was she said, like, how proud she was of me. Courtney was telling me how proud she was of me because I wasn't drinking anymore, you know? And it meant a lot to me, but, you know, I was doing pills, you know? Like, she thought I was doing well, but I just switched from one substance to another. And, you know, that day ended, and, you know, that would end up being the last time I, I saw Courtney. So, on August 23rd, 2009, I remember getting a call from uh, one of our mutual best friends, Brosny. She's the one I went to go visit on my birthday this year in Long Beach, still one of my best friends to this day, and Brosny called me up and she said, she said, Chris, you gotta come down to the hospital. Like, uh, Courtney's grandparents found Courtney and like, uh, she was having a seizure or something like that and they had to rush her to the hospital. And my brain just starts going a million miles a minute. Like, what happened? What's going on? What's going on? What's what's happening? And like, I was telling, uh, you know, my son's mom, I'm like, I gotta go, Courtney's in the hospital, something happened, I don't know what's up. And I'm like trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with Dylan and, you know, um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get down in the hospital. And before I could even walk out the door to get to the hospital, I got another call from Brosny telling me that they ended up pulling the plug on Courtney and she had passed away. And that was the first time I ever lost somebody that close to me and I didn't know what to do, I didn't know how to feel. Still to this day, I don't know the specifics of it. It was a result of Courtney's alcoholism, but I don't know if it was alcohol, uh, alcohol poisoning or I don't know if Courtney was trying to quit and the withdrawals is what hit her. So those of you who don't know, alcohol withdrawals can be deadly. All right, they can cause seizures, uh, cardiac arrest, all sorts of things. And yeah, um, you know, I, I took it really hard and, you know, we went to her service and everything like that. And I think this was still back in the MySpace time before Facebook like really became a thing. And I remember looking and seeing her friends, especially after Courtney had just passed away and they were like, Let's go out and have a drink for Courtney. Let's go have a drink. Let's go to her favorite bar. Let's have the drinks that Courtney had. And I'm sitting there and that anger came back. Like, are you kidding me, people? This, this thing just killed her. Now you wanna go celebrate her life by drinking? You wanna go do the thing that killed her? And I, I hated her friends so much because I felt like her friends had enabled her. But I still, I had so much guilt too because I thought I could save her. Like maybe if I would have stayed with her, maybe, you know, uh, if I had been a better friend, maybe if I would have got sober, maybe I could have helped her and all this guilt and the loss and I never knew how to deal with my feelings or emotions and this is the first time someone close to me died. So not only was I taking pills, but then I started drinking again and it got bad, it got so bad. And the guilt and shame that I felt because of it, I can't even put into words because this is what killed her. And I knew she didn't want me to be doing this. I knew she wanted better for me and like, when somebody passes away, I think something that eats us up is like, how do we honor them? How do we honor their memory, right? And because of my addiction and because of the fact that I couldn't stop, I, like I wasn't honoring her her memory. Like I was doing the thing that killed her and I knew she wanted better for me. I was a father, you know, all these other things. Like I had the opportunity to get my life on track. And so that guilt and the sadness and the grief, it was just making things worse. And it took a long time of dealing with this. And I did so many things. I remember just crying in my car and writing like emails to her and 
talking like to myself, to her, and just so many things. I was taking it so, so, so poorly as most people would if your best friend or, you know, an ex of yours like had passed away. And, you know, I won't dive too much into my story, but it, it took two, two and a half years later for me to finally get clean. And, you know, now, now this is what I made this channel for. You know, we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And, you know, today, um, not even today, but early in recovery, like early recovery is hard. For any of you out there who are in recovery, like, you know, you know this thing's hard. And one of my motivations was like, you know, I'm doing this for her. I'm doing this for her. I'm staying clean for her. I want to get high. I want to get drunk today, but I'm going to do it for her. I'm going to honor Courtney. I'm going to honor Remember. I'm going to stay clean. You know what I mean? Like, I would ask myself, what would she want me to do in this situation? What would she want me to do? And, you know, I would laugh about it. Like, I'm not a religious person or anything like that, but I'm like, if Courtney is up there, she's probably laughing her her ass off about what I'm dealing with or struggling with or whatever and just stuff because that's just the kind of person she was. She would make fun of me and I loved it. Like she would, she was a great crap talker. Like she was amazing at that. And like, I imagine her laughing at my struggles, but you know, wanting me to learn from my lessons and the dumb things I was doing and early recovery and the terrible relationships I was getting into afterwards and stuff. And you know, I, I stayed clean, you know, for a lot of reasons. I stayed clean for my son and for myself and for my family and for my friends and all sorts of things. But you know, like one of the biggest things is today, Today, one of the reasons I have this channel and the reason why I want to talk about this or the reason why I, I have my job at a, at a rehab center and help people with mental health is because, you know, I wasn't able to save Courtney, you know? And I, I eventually accepted that. But maybe I can help somebody else who's dealing with the same pain and suffering that she was dealing with that couldn't stop her from drinking, you know what I mean? That's why, you know, my, my career is at a rehab, you know, helping others who deal with depression and anxiety and PTSD and all those other things. That's why, you know, in my off time, I do these YouTube videos and stuff because I knew her pain, but I didn't know how to help it. And educating myself and, you know, going back to school for this thing, like my goal is to just help others. And, you know, even talking about grief, I know some people are still dealing with the grief or loss of their friend or family member and stuff like that. And I have to share this story to let you know that it doesn't get better. Like the thing is, this never goes away. The pain never goes away. It doesn't, but it gets better it gets better over time. I can look back and understand that my pain that I felt nine years ago was way more than the pain I feel now. Like I still miss her all the time. I have dreams about her. There are things that remind me of her. Courtney and I, you know, we dated and we're best friends in the city that I currently live. There's places I drive around town. I remember there was a, a casino here, I can't remember the name of it, where she worked and I used to go visit her because she worked the graveyard shift. And I would go there just to hang out with her and get food and my friends would go in there and, you know, and, and they tore that casino down. And I remember that that hurt me and it killed me because it felt like they were, you know, taking part of her away from me, you know, and I had already lost her because I used to drive past it. And, but you know, there's still so many other places here in town, but you know, it does get better. And you know, something else is that, you know, Courtney was one of the, the first people that I truly loved, you know, that relationship. And, you know, when she passed away and then my, my, my son's mom and I, we split up, I thought, I'll never love somebody again. I will never find somebody again like Courtney. And you know, I didn't, I didn't. For anybody who knew Courtney, Courtney was one of a kind, but I, I learned that I can love again. I have a beautiful girlfriend right now who I love with all of my heart and she's amazing. But I, I, I think it's important because, you know, when we lose somebody, we think that we'll never experience those emotions again. So although my girlfriend now is uh, nothing like Courtney, I have that same love for my girlfriend, Tristan. And I think that's important, you know, especially just even looking at breakups and things like that, you know, because we think we're never gonna find anybody again or never gonna experience those emotions, but you can and you will when you go out there and do these things. But, you know, the biggest thing is like, on a regular basis, I'm just trying to honor my friend's memory and you know, I'm, I'm glad that I'm sober and clear headed um, to help my other friends, you know, every year when the anniversary comes up um, and things like that. And you know, my, my best friend, Brosny, who called me uh, when Courtney passed away, like it, I know it means so much to her 
that she didn't lose two of her best friends because I got clean, because I got sober. And you know, that's that's another reason why I do this thing. And Brosny does a great job telling me how proud she is of me and stuff like that. There was a time when Brosny thought she was about to lose another best friend and that's that's terrible you know not only did my mom think she was going to lose a son but my best friends thought they were going to lose their friend chris and all that kind of stuff so i do a lot of what i do in memory and in honor of courtney and my suggestion for any of you who are dealing with grief and loss you know ask yourself what can you do to honor your honor their memory ask yourself on a regular basis what would they want you to do when i get into that depression and things like that and i want to isolate and curl up in a little ball or not spend time with my son or something like that just because my emotions are hitting me i'm just like what would courtney want me to do like i live my life in honor of her i do it because she didn't have that opportunity and um i'm I'm going to link a video that I did in the last three years. I've lost over 70 people. Just that's the nature of the disease of addiction and working at a rehab center and knowing a bunch of other people with addiction. And you know, something I do is I live in honor of them. I live my life to the fullest every single day. And that's something that brings me joy and happiness because I know all these people whose lives ended way too soon. Like Courtney was only 24 years old. Like. I live in honor of them and I experience life and I'm present for life and I'm present for my emotions. Like whether they're good or bad, like at least I get to feel them. And every day I wake up with a smile on my face because at least no matter how bad my day was before, at least I get to try again today and try to become better because there's so many people who will never have that opportunity. And I'm starting to ramble, but I really wanted to make this video um, and I hope it helps some of you people out there. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know, I don't know. This is a, a, a purely unedited video and I just want to be honest and open and hopefully provide y'all with some hope and hopefully let you know a little bit more about me and why I dedicate so much time and effort to helping other people with mental illness and their struggles and their pain and their suffering because I've been there many, 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 many times and I'm here to help, all right? So thanks for watching. I'll be back with some more upbeat stuff and I'll see you next time.